What's up guys, it's Faded. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing awesome as always. And the goriest Call of Duty ever created is finally on the chopping block. Welcome everybody to Call of Duty World at War. Real quickly though, I just want to thank you guys so much for all the support on the OG Call of Duty stuff recently. We've been getting a ton of reception on the Black Ops 1 video, the Modern Warfare 2 video. The MW3 video is starting to get up there. It's a little bit slow in terms of growth, but I have a feeling it'll uh, end up being up there with the other two videos that I put up uh, last couple days. So thank you guys very much for the support. But yeah, COD World at War, man. The absolute most brutal call of duty ever created and i don't think we're ever going to see anything like this ever again okay so let me paint a picture in your heads for you the year is 2008 cod 4 has been out for roughly a half to three quarters of a year and we see the first trailers for this game initially people were not too keen on having another world war ii title and that goes to show you how incredible and influential call of duty 4 was people wanted more modern military games because up to that point Call of Duty hadn't dipped their toes into any other setting, they were just World War II titles. So the initial lukewarm reception persisted until launch day, and then once people got their hands on this game and began playing it, they loved it just as much as COD 4. That's due to the fact that this game is essentially COD 4 with a World War II coat of paint. It had COD 4's progression, customization, gunplay, but it took place during the world's worst global conflict. Oh man, I completely forgot, you can just drive these tanks around and shoot shells at people. It was a ridiculous time we were living in. Sucks though, I really wish I knew what happened to my old account, because I had a lot of playtime on that and the majority of things were unlocked too. Now I'm struggling to get to level four to even get creative class unlocked. But yeah, let's step away from multiplayer for a minute and talk about the campaign. This campaign really showcased the horrors of war and it let you fight as pretty much every major nation that was involved in the conflict. Unlike COD World War II where there's no fighting as the Western Front or like in Vanguard where you're playing as the 1940s equivalent to the Suicide Squad. The campaign itself was fairly lengthy. It was one of the longer campaigns in Call of Duty history, but once you finished it, you'd see your character wait up on the beaches of Normandy with the undead Usain Bolt sprinting towards you. And this was our first introduction to what would become Call of Duty's most iconic third mode, Zombies. It was a very bare bones mode. You had access to the mystery box and wall buys, but that was pretty much it. Perca-Colas and Wonder Weapons weren't introduced until two years later when Zombies would return in Treyarch's next title, which would be the first Black Ops game. You also are only limited to Nocturne Toten as the only Zombies map unless you bought the Map Pack bundle, which would give you some multiplayer maps as well as uh, a couple extra Zombies maps, which would be remastered in Black Ops 3. Okay, cool. Someone blew me up. I thought I was just going to be able to stay in there the entire game. So the next thing I want to discuss involves the multiplayer. This game had an abundance of factions. Unlike today's Call of Duty, where it's my team versus the enemy team, we had the Marines, the Wehrmacht, the Imperial Army, the Red Army, so many different factions with their own unique in-game announcers, and they actually had passion behind their voice lines. They didn't sound like they were reading from a script. Now, of course, a game this old isn't without its balance issues, and World at War has a lot of them. Snipers were at a huge disadvantage with the ADS speeds. Juggernaut was more broken in this game than it was in Call of Duty 4, and I will die on this hill. The MP40 and STG were really the only guns you'd see unless you were matched with new players who were stuck with default classes. In that case, you'd see things like the SVT, the Tom in the trench gun and then one or two springfields mixed in now one thing this game is remembered fondly for is the soundtrack as this was the start of some of the most iconic zombies themes namely lullaby for a dead man which plays when you get a game over on nocturne on toten the song itself is much lower pitched in game that's probably because it's one of kevin sherwood's demo takes that i guess was good enough to make it into the final release and i like it a lot it's got a mean bass line to it i'll play a sample right here so you see what i'm talking about And also, I mean, the main intro to the game, the Treyarch logo is accompanied by the sound that plays when a new round in Zombies is about to start. This game is one of the most iconic depictions of World War II in gaming, and it really does put a massive smile on my face when I see people rank it super high up on tier lists, because, you know, with all the work that the developers put in, especially into making one kick-ass campaign story, this game definitely deserves its flowers, and you can see it's left a lasting impact on the franchise as well as the players. Once Microsoft fixed the servers for the old games, a lot of my friends' first questions that they asked me was, hey Kyle, are you going to play World at War first? Yo, Kyle, let's run some World at War. That just goes to show you how much of an impact this game has had. Um, um, current player counts right now, they fluctuate between 1,500 to 2,000 players, but I've seen close to 3,000 during peak time, which makes me super happy. I know some people want Black Ops 2 to get a remaster next, but it's got to be this game. I want to see what World at War looks like inside of IW9, because that engine has given us some great looking gameplay with Modern Warfare 2 2022, especially if you have a high-end PC where you can just crank up the graphics 
I'd really like to see World at War get that same treatment, and hopefully we will one day. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and share the video with a friend because all the support helps the channel a lot. Code Faded is 15% off at CosmicDust.com, so if you're grabbing a restock or trying something for the first time, you can use my code to save a little bit of money. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video, and I will see you all in whatever video I upload next. Take care.